uh, let's uh, move on. I would like to introduce Mr. Neera Jain, Country Director, India of uh, PATH. Thank you very much, Mr. Jain, for joining us. We have uh, Dr. Indra Chakravarti, former Director and Dean of All India Institute of Hygiene and Public Health of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and Susan Ferguson, UN Women Representative for India. Uh, Neera Ji, I would like to come to you and ask you this question. You know, we've been talking about 75 years of health, hygiene and nutrition. Uh, immunization is one of the most cost-effective public health interventions and largely responsible for reduction of under 5 mortality rate. And immunization is something which is, uh, uh, which, which seems to gain even more traction and prominence uh, as far as COVID is concerned. While today India is a leading producer and exporter of vaccines, it is still home to one third of the world's unimmunized children. Clearly, a lot more needs to be done. Uh, thank you, Sanket. Uh, thank you for having me here. Good to see you, uh, Mr. Bachchan, as usual. Uh, yeah, immunization is clearly uh, one of the most cost-effective interventions when it comes to return on investment uh, from an economic perspective. Uh, we've also, you know, we've also seen how our COVID program has been completely sort of, uh, you know, deeply involved in the whole idea of how do we immunize the populations. Uh, I think uh, we've achieved a lot over the last uh, many years. Uh, we have reduced our under five mortality rate. We've re reduced our maternal uh, mortality, etc. But I think there is still a lot to do. We also have reduced uh, with the it, we have introduced a lot of new vaccines in the immunization program over the last few years. The rotavirus being one. Uh, the pneumococcal vaccine being another and where we've also been uh, like Soumya said you know we've been the pharmacy of the world which means a lot of the vaccines which are now globally available to low and middle income countries are coming out of India. Uh, the pneumococcal being one which is a WHO approved vaccine from Serum Institute, uh, the rotavirus from uh, Bharat as well as uh, Serum both uh, being there. Um, I think there's still a lot of work to be done because in terms of reach, we are still at about 70-75%. Uh, there are still dropouts, there are still uh, challenges there. We've also seen immunization take a huge hit during the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, for our future generations, it's absolutely important that our routine immunization programs work much more effectively. Uh, we actually go to those hard to reach. And you know, the, the whole, uh, your... Uh, for this program, taking everyone along, I think that's the challenge. How do we look at health equity more than just uh, reaching 70% of the population? How do we ensure that 100% of the population is reached? And we will continue to be the pharmacy of the world. I think that business is growing. That work is growing. Uh, we are seen as a very reliable uh, supplier of uh, vaccines. So that will uh, continue to grow as we as we move forward. Over to you, Sankit. Uh this is for uh, Indra Chakravarti ji. Indra ji, you have uh, almost uh, five decades of experience in uh, public health, food safety, nutrition, what is commonly called WASH, W-A-S-H. What are the areas that you feel have, we have not been able to improve as much as expected? And why is that so? Um, so we have, uh, as a matter of fact, India has uh, in the top of where treatment is concerned curative treatment is concerned. I think India is uh, one of the top most countries. Uh, we, have, we even have medical tourism for people coming in for treatment. But I think the place where India has not done so well is a pre-treatment region. How treatment, when you come for treatment, your health is nearly failed already. But I think what you need to do is touch upon the health issues before you need treatment, the preventive part of it. And I think that's where uh, India has to give a more, uh, co concentrate more on that. And I would like to sort of summarize just a couple of things which I think are very important. Uh, one is nutrition. I think nutrition is a thing which is very important to safe keep health. And if you look into the Indian scenario today, compared to many of the other underdeveloped countries, we are far worse off. For example, if you look at the underweight of children, which is more than 35%, uh, stunting in children, which is nearly 40%, wasting is 21%. As a matter of fact, one third of the ch wasted children of the world today, more than 46 million, India hosts them. So we have such a large number of children who are wasted. 
when India has progressed so much in every other way, why should we have uh, undernutrition at such a high rate in this country? Anemia is another very, thing of great public health concern to, I think, every public health personnel and to every individual. When we looked into the National Family Health Survey of NFHS 4 and NFHS 5, which was years 2016 and 2019, we found anemia in children and women, instead of going down, has significantly gone up during this period. And we don't know after the pandemic what's really going to happen. It's basically we get iron from the diet, which prevents anemia. But we, Indians do not have such less uh, di- iron in their diet. We still do not know. If you look into the Global Nutrition Survey, we find India ranks as low as 170 out of 180 countries where anemia is concerned. So this is something which actually is of great concern to each one of us. And a couple of other things which I feel India should have controlled better is the infant mortality rate, which were more than 28 percent. The low birth weight of children, these are all normal issues in, in, in the life of people, no, low birth weight. Children are born, though we have 2,500 as our, uh, our, as our cut of weight, many countries have 3,000 in grams. In spite of that, our low birth weight is more than 30% even now. The maternal mortality rate has improved over the years, I think from 130 to 110 or 113. But most of the other countries have a double digit. Right. So I think these are some of the public health issues, which are yes. normal. Nutrition is a normal factor in the human being's life. Infant, why, why should infants die before one right. year of age? Why should mothers die uh, when they're giving birth to their children? I'd like to why take on from you? that. Actually, if I could just uh, take use that as a, a basis for asking uh, Susan Ferguson a question. You know, we are talking about leave no one behind uh, over the next 12 hours. That's the kind of theme, one planet. And we've learned from COVID that if you leave anybody behind and don't vaccinate them, variants de- develop. Now, tying that up with 75 years of health, hygiene and nutrition in India, uh, gender has been, the f- f- women in India have been, and the girl child have been slightly left out. And, uh, you know, tell us why gender is critical to advancing this whole concept of leaving no one behind. Thank you very much and thank you very much for the question. Good morning to everyone here today. Um, Well, I think there's a short answer to that question and that is that women make up 50% of the population globally. So, you know, if women aren't able to participate um, in a range of different opportunities, then no country can reach the sustainable development goals. Um, So that's the short answer. But of course, within that, there are many women who are also at the bottom of the pyramid of many of the disadvantaged groups who uh, may be living in poverty. So um, so we form part of this, at the same time, a massive um, opportunity for economic development Uh, But also there are so many women and girls who are left behind within different categories and marginalised people. So we need to, you know, there's that old saying of a rising tide lifts all boats. And I think that is true. You know, women need to be part of this tide so that the whole country and the globe can reach our full full development. Um, So, you know, gender intersects with different identities. Um, So, you know, um, if you're disadvantaged because of your gender identity and also your class, caste, ethnicity, these kinds of categories, you really suffer a double or triple disadvantage at times. So this is why we need very specific interventions to unlock the potential for women because we know that if we do invest in women and gender equality, it will improve everyone's lives. Women tend to reinvest a lot of their income in development opportunities for their families, the education of their children, the health and well-being of their families, improved accommodation and infrastructure. So these are some of the reasons why it's so important to look at gender equality as a part of the leaving no one behind equation. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, just want to ask Neeraji, you know, there's been a, a malaria report in 2018, a world malaria report, according to which India isn't any longer one of the top three countries with the highest 
uh, malaria burden. And we've made impressive gains in the global fight against malaria, haven't we? Absolutely, sir. I think malaria is one of uh, the success stories that we've had over the since independence. Uh, you know, uh, when we did uh, get independence, there were about 10 lakh people uh, dying of malaria every year in India. And uh, the last malaria report, uh, the numbers are in hundreds, actually. Of course, uh, there are uh, people who claim that maybe the numbers are not 100% uh, covering every death because uh, maybe a autopsy was not done and uh, we weren't actually able to determine the cause of death. But either way, the numbers have really come down very, very sharply over the last few years. Uh, we are uh, now, while we are in the top 11 countries globally uh, in terms of the total number of malaria morbidities, but in terms of mortality, it's gone down substantially. We are looking at elimination of malaria by 2030 and probably before uh, even. Um, there's been a lot of work that's happened. The challenge with a lot of these diseases and malaria in the 60s also, we were close to elimination. Uh, we lost our sight of it and then uh, we had a resurgence. Uh, this was at the end of the 60s, early 70s. So I think the challenge is going to be going forward that we continue to focus to make sure that we are able to eliminate and we are able to stop transmission. Because until we try to stop transmission, this uh, is not going to go away. And uh, from, uh, you know, from where we're sitting in the public health space and we do a lot of work on malaria, we are seeing uh, that traction. We are seeing us going in the right direction. TB is another one that I talk about all the time where we are uh, making huge gains at this point. Ji, thank you very much. And Susan Ferguson, who is the president of the Sanstha, वो है यूएन विमेन लाइवलीहुड्स और ऐसे ही गांव 40 से एक कुछ गांव हैं और ऐसे ही गांव से मेरे सहयोगी सोहित मिश्रा वहां से रिपोर्टिंग कर रहे हैं आइए उनके पास चलते हैं जानने के लिए कि जमीन पर क्या काम हो रहा है सोहित आइए उनके पास बिल्कुल सर क्या देखिए अगर जमीनी हालात की बात करें तो यहां पर यूएन विमेन और साथ ही साथ एस्पोरस मिलकर ऐसी महिलाओं को उन्होंने एंटरप्रेन्योर बनाया जो आज से एक साल पहले तक वो मजदूरी करते थे या फिर वो घर पर बैठते थे वो किस तरह से हुआ किस तरह से ये सोला ड्राइंग प्रोजेक्ट के जरिए ये वुमेन एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप चल रहा है इसके बारे में हम बात करेंगे और इसी के लिए हमारे साथ निधि जी हैं जो को फाउंडर हैं एसपोरेस की निधि पहले आपसे बात करते हैं फिर हम इन 30 महिलाओं से भी उनमें से कुछ लोगों से बात करेंगे जिन पे इसका असर पड़ा अगर आप पहले बता सके कि किस तरह से आ, आ, क्या कुछ करते हैं जिसके वजह से जो महिलाएं एक साल पहले तक वो मजदूरी करती थी खेत में या फिर वो घर पर बैठती थी आज वो एंटरप्रेन्योर बन चुकी हैं यू एन वुमेन चैतन्या एन और एस ने साथ में मिलके ये यहाँ काम करना शुरू किया यहाँ हम जो महिलाएं एग्रीकल्चरल लेबर्स थी डेली वेज वर्कर्स थी या जिनको कोई रोजगार नहीं मिल रहा था उनको ये सोलर पावर्ड फूड प्रोसेसिंग इक्विपमेंट्स देते हैं हम इन्हें ट्रेन करते हैं इन इक्विपमेंट्स पे काम करने के लिए जिससे ये प्रोसेसिंग कर पाए अगर आप बता सके यानी सरकार जी होता यह है कि ये जो रॉ मटेरियल है इसे इस तरह से फ्लेक्स बनाने का काम ये ड्राई ये फ्रेश जिंजर है और इसको ड्राई जिंजर में कन्वर्ट किया जाता है ये ड्राई जिंजर कई सारे फूड इंग्रेडिएंट्स जैसे कई सारी पैकेज फूड में जाता है एज फूड इंग्रेडिएंट्स यहाँ पे इन महिलाओं को घर बैठे ये काम मिलता है और एक एश्योर्ड एडिशनल इनकम मिलता है जो इनकम है वो डायरेक्टली महिलाओं के हाथ में जाता है जिससे आज ये अपने फूड स्पेंड्स पे कंट्रोल कर पाए इन्हें जहाँ पे खर्च करना है वहाँ पे खर्च कर पाए इनके फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स जो ये कंज्यूम करें इनकी मात्रा भी ये बड़ी है बिकॉज पहले ये राइस खाते थे अभी बिकॉज इनके पास एडिशनल इनकम है ये अब कंट्रोल कर पाती है मुझे कहाँ पे स्पेंड करना है इनमें से कुछ महिलाएं ऐसी भी हैं जो हैंडी है इनको भी हम लोगों ने रोजगार प्रोवाइड किया है और ये यू एन वेमेन और चैतन्य के साथ ही पॉसिबल हो पाया है तो ऐसे वुमेन की आप बात करें जिनको इससे पहले संगीत जी काम ही नहीं मिल पाता था क्योंकि वो कर नहीं पाती थी आ, आप हिंदी मराठी जिसमें भी आप बोलना चाहें बोल दें पहले किस तरह से आप किस काम कर पाती थी नहीं कर पाती थी आप क्या कुछ हो रहा है पहले अपना नाम बता दीजिए मेरा नाम संगीता पीताम्बर पाटिल संगीता जी आ, पहले आप काम मिलता था नहीं मिलता था आप क्या कर रही हैं खेत मजदूरी खेत मजदूरी करती थी मजदूरी करती थी खेत मजदूरी वह खेती नहीं है हमारी खेती नहीं है तो कितना फर्क पड़ा है पहले और अभी में एक साल पहले आपने नवंबर से शुरू किया आप देखते रहेंगे तो यहाँ पर क्लीनिंग से लेकर कटिंग से लेकर सोलह ड्राइंग का सारी चीज़ें चल रही हैं कितना फर्क पड़ा है इस एक साल में अगर बात की जाए बहुत फर्क पड़ा है बहुत अच्छा लगता है हमको सब 
अच्छा है सर परिवार में सब अच्छा लगता है बहुत पैसे भी मिलता है बैंक में जाने के लिए मिलता है हमको सब मिलता है अच्छा पहले कितना कमा लेती थी अभी कितना कमाती हैं पहले इस पच्चीस हजार साल का बस साल का और अब हाँ चालीस पच्चीस चालीस हजार मिला पैतालीस हाँ तो कहीं ना कहीं इनकी जो इनकम है वो डबल हो चुकी है और भी कई लोग आप देखेंगे की लगातार काम यहाँ पर उनकी ओर से शुरू है मैडम आप पर कैसा प्रभाव पड़ा कितना फर्क पड़ा वो बताए जो हम एक साल में पच्चीस तीस हजार रुपए कमाते थे उसमें हमारी कर्जा पूरी नहीं हो सकती थी एक साल में हमने उसका कर्जा ही चुका दिया और हमारी खान पीन में भी बदलाव आ गया है आपने कर्जा भी चुका दिया चुका दिया तो संकेत ये चीजें हुई हैं और मैं आपको बता दूं ये जहाँ पर हम मौजूद हैं ये वडला वडली गाँव है जो जलगाँव में आता है और यहाँ पर रोज़गार की इतनी चीज़ें मौजूद नहीं हैं और ऐसे में अगर जो लोग मजदूरी करते थे उनकी आय दोगुनी हो गई और वो अब ऑन्टरप्रीनर बन चुके हैं लोगों ने अपना कर्ज चुका लिया कई लोगों को जो नौकरी नहीं मिल रही थी वो नौकरी मिल रही है तो इसका ज़मीनी स्तर पर आप कह सकते हैं कि असर देखने मिल रहा है uh, What do you feel are some of the other interventions of United Nations Women in India to deliver on this principle of, you know, leaving no one behind, which is basically the major theme of our program today? Thank you very much, Namita. Um, so I think what we just saw was a really good example of um, actually giving women more access to basic infrastructure. So often women really don't have that ability to take their enterprises to the next level because they can't get a loan or they can't access these kinds of infrastructure to improve their livelihoods. So this is something that UN Women really concentrates on in our skilling program. We work uh, with women in very marginalised communities who dropped out of school, for example, or who've never been able to achieve. Um, a diploma to get into a particular area of work. So we have a big skilling program, um, and we we look at how do we get women back into formal education so that they can move on with their lives. But we also look at um, how can we open up opportunities within the government. How can we help um, farmers, for example, women farmers who may not be registered as farmers? How can we help them? Um, formalize their their training and their skills so that they can then be registered as farmers and get access to some of the government support um, that male farmers have. Um, so that's another example. But importantly, we also work with um, the national government and state governments on improving uh, women's access to services for gender based violence. So we know that under the pandemic globally, um, and this is a huge women's health issue in general. But because of the pandemic, a lot of women are experiencing more violence at home than they used to. So we support the government of India here in helping their one-stop centres provide better support for women and girls who are experiencing violence during the pandemic. Right. So there, there's some of the ways that we do this, um, and um, we, you know, it's just I just would like to emphasise it's just so important to bring women into the economic dimension because. There, uh, a few years ago, the McKinsey Institute did a huge research program looking at if there were women in the private sector to the same extent as men in the formal private sector. I'm talking about India alone could achieve an an extra seven hundred billion dollars economic growth by 2025. I think that that time frame has changed now because of the pandemic. But it does demonstrate the critical need to unlock women's potential. All right, Susan. Many thanks for joining us. Or, बाकी सब मेहमानों का भी बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद.